Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna be showing you a speed up they made to Python itself. Uh, I made the tokenized module uh, somewhere between 20 and 30 percent faster. I'm gonna show you how, how I found um, this performance problem and then how I went about fixing it. So uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so I was working on uh, a tool that I wrote called Add Trail and Comma, and then you know, true true to its name. <laughs> It adds uh, trailing commas. It is a code formatter for Python. And, you know, it's it's similar to Black. However, add trailing comma has existed for several years before Black came around. And uh, they actually agree on how to format function calls, which is kind of cool. Although Black is a little bit more aggressive about it. And uh, add trailing comma really, you know, will leave your calls alone for the most part unless they're missing commas. Uh, but it tries to make sure that you avoid, like, arbitrary indentation and, you know, adding and removing... Um, adding or removing function arguments uh, has a minimal diff. But anyway, that's unrelated to this. Um, I was working on add trailing comma, and I was actually improving some of the performance of this by rewriting some of the internals uh, to be a little bit more modular. And I accidentally made it faster and kind of wanted to look at how I made it faster. Um, so I had kind of a reproducible, um, let's see, old.py. I had a reproducible way to kind of run this and you know, look at how slow it was. Um, and so this particular invocation was taking, you know, about 380 milliseconds. And, you know, it scales linearly by the number of files that it runs, uh, but that was fine. And I wanted to profile this. So I went and reached for profiling. I did another video on profiling. I'm not gonna go over all the tools that I use here. So I'm gonna kind of like quickly whiz by them and just show you the pretty graphs, um, but I will link the profiling video in the description. Um, but in order to do that, Python dash m c profile dash o out dot p stats dash m add trailing comma. So this will run uh, c profile against that and output a p stats file. And then I'm going to use g prof to dot with out dot p stats. We'll actually adjust this in a little bit uh, because the the output graph is going to look not as good as it could be. D s v g dash o out dot s v g. Uh, so I'm just taking the pstats file and generating a call graph from it. And then I'm going to open that in Firefox. And we're actually going to prune this because this graph is kind of hard to read because of the way that it uh, filtered that. So we're going to use uh, this function call here, fix file. I believe if we do dash z this, uh, now this should be a little bit more readable. Okay, so now it's more, now it's much more like a tree, which looks a lot more like the actual call stack. Um, but while I was looking at this, I noticed that a lot of time, almost all of the time is spent inside the tokenized module. And I was like, that's a little weird. Uh, I don't expect tokenized to be that slow and that significant for everything that's happening here. Uh, because at the same time, we're also calling the AST and the AST also does a tokenization. So you would, you would kind of expect like the AST to be slower than the uh, tokenization, but it is not the case in this case. And um, one thing that I noticed that was kind of, you know, annoying about this is uh, almost 11% of the tokenization, well, so the tokenization is taking 35% and what, 10% of that 35% uh, or not 10% of that, uh, what, two sevenths, so 15% of, of the tokenization, uh, somewhere between 15 and 20% of the tokenization is spent inside this underscore compile function. And you'll notice it's calling re compile, which calls re underscore compile, which does some other stuff here. Um, and I was like, that's weird. Uh, usually, you know, usually when you're working with regular expressions, you'll compile them at the module scope and then you won't recompile them uh, after that. But you'll notice that we're, <laughs> we're sending 62,000 calls to this compile function. And so I went over to CPython and uh, I first did, you know, configure, oh, I forgot to do this before. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll let that run while, while I uh, talk about some other stuff. Um, so I, I ran configure and make to build CPython so that I had a fresh copy of, you know, the interpreter there. And I also looked for a really large file in CPython, um, similar to this, you know, old.py that I'm using over here. This is, this is a large file that comes from some of my open source. Uh, it's not actually called old.py, that was just the easiest name for it. Um, but I did this xargs command, uh, xargs wc-l, I guess we want to do dash z or dash c and then dash zero and then 
uh, sort dash rn and then head five. Uh, oh, that didn't work. What happened there? Uh, uh, oh, the, the dash C needs to come here. <laughs> it's like, that's weird. <laughs> here we go. Uh, so I found some like large files that were in C Python. Um, I particularly took lib slash test slash test socket, and I made a small script that just tokenized this file. And so I can do that by doing with open this as F, uh, and we want to import the tokenized module. And uh, I put this in a main function just so that, you know, the interpretation isn't part of the overhead. Main, exit, main, and I did, uh, let's see, contents equals io.bytes.io f.read, uh, and for underscore in range, I just tokenized it, I think, five times, or something like that. It didn't actually matter. Contents.seek zero, and then for thing in tokenize.tokenize, .tokenize, uh, contents.readline. This is just the weird interface for tokenize, um, but we're not actually doing any work here. We're just trying to profile uh, tokenize itself. And you'll see if I run this, uh, that it takes a while and you know doesn't, doesn't output anything, which is good. Okay, this is finished now. Uh, so then I was able to take my freshly built C Python, which is at dot slash Python, and run this little script here. And it took a while, whatever. Um, but I was also able to feed this into C profile, dash M C profile, dash O out P stats, uh, dash M T to run my T file. And we're going to use that same gprof dot as before, uh, which is over here for some reason. Uh, out dot P stats dot T S V G. Out dot svg. So anyway, uh, dash o out dot svg. Uh, so then I was able to isolate that tokenization to just just one tokenized run. So you can see here that uh, an even larger percent of compile of of this uh, overall thing is spent in this compile function, uh, and it's calling it a, a whopping two hundred and thirteen thousand times for that little script that we did. So I wanted to see if there's an easy way to factor this out. And I also wanted to figure out what this compile function is doing uh, because it, you know, <laughs> if it's taking 27% of the execution, it better be doing something pretty important. Uh, so I opened up lib tokenize.py, which is where this lives in the uh, C Python repository. And I looked for that compile function. And this compile function is dead simple. All it's doing is calling re.compile. And under the hood, re.compile does some actual does some caching behind the scenes, um, but clearly it's not enough to make this not dominate this execution time here. Uh, you'll you'll note that you know this gets called so many times that uh, things like enum attribute access are showing up in this um, in this profile here, which I believe comes from this dot attribute here. Oh no, maybe not. No, it has to be somewhere further in there. Uh, but even even this is showing up in that. And so my uh, my initial thought was to look at all of the places which call this compile function. And so if we look for compile, uh, there are a couple of them. One of them is here. This is actually the one that is important, and this is the one that I uh, fixed. Uh, but there's another one down here which uh, compiles a regex for the end um, end triple quoted string. <laughs> uh, what is this one? This is also more triple quoted string stuff. Uh, so it's mostly triple coded strings or this special pseudo token uh, regular expression. Now this pseudo token regular expression is actually huge. It's a very, very large uh, pattern. And so my initial fix for, for fixing this was to just do what I do in my programs, which is to pre-compile the regex at the module scope, re.compile pseudo token. Now note I didn't bother with re.unicode. That's the default in Python 3. I assume that code's just old, so there's there's not really a reason for that. Um, so I just did this, and we took the compile function. So now instead of using pseudo token, we're using pseudo token re. And if we run our uh, C profile again, oh, I should have put it to a different file. <laughs> well, we'll we'll put the SVG to a different file so that we can compare the two. Gprof. There we go. Out two. Uh, so now if we open up this one, you'll see that uh, just by pre-compiling that regular expression, we have completely eliminated that entire 
uh, you know, that entire slow part of this. And if we look at the like net time here, uh, we're doing 1800 milliseconds there. And before it was 2700 milliseconds. So we saved about, you know, <laughs> 900 milliseconds. We saved about a third of the time um, in, <laughs> in just, just by pre-compiling regular expression. Now, this was actually not uh, super acceptable for C Python uh, because this slowed down the tokenize module a bunch. If we do py time python dash c import tokenize, uh, you know, some non scientific profiling here, you can see that it's taking about three, 35 milliseconds to import that. Whereas, um, let's see, yeah, we'll actually just get rid of this patch because, uh, I mean, it's already committed now. Uh, whereas, you know, it was taking, you know, 20, 25 milliseconds. So it was, it increased the import time of this module significantly, uh, because it had to compile that regular expression and compiling regular expressions is kind of slow. Uh, so I actually took a different approach to solving this, which is just to memoize this particular function here, basically slap an LRU cache tech creator on it. Um, I did a video on LRU cache. I will link that in the description. Oh man, I'm not going to remember all these videos <laughs> to link today. Uh, hopefully I do. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so I just did import func tools and then essentially had a one line patch where I took this compile function and just put func tools.lru cache on here. And it turns out this is fast enough. Uh, it doesn't quite eliminate all the overhead of this function here because we're still calling this function a bunch. Um, but lru cache, you know, stops it from calling five other functions, um, which is where most of the slowness was happening from. And so if we do that and we profile this again and we output the new profile, out three.svg, and we open that in the browser, out three, uh, you'll see, oh wait. Oh, <laughs> the, the compile still shows up on the graph because it takes, you know, 11 milliseconds to compile that regular expression once, but you can see that the call count is only two. We're not, we're not doing a bunch of calls to this function anymore like we were. Um, and so it's, you know, it's 0.58% instead of, uh, you know, 27%, for, for instance. Now, this one is slightly slower than uh, this one here. So you can see, like, there's a, a 38 millisecond difference, and that's because uh, the LRU cache still gets called, and so there's still some amount of time spent in it. It actually doesn't show up in the graph because it's implemented in C, so um, profiling module doesn't really notice it. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that's how we sped up the, the tokenized module. I also made a pull request for this. So if we look at, at GitHub, um, and there was a little bit of back and forth between myself and another core dev uh, who actually stops by the chat in stream sometimes. Um, you can see, like, here's here's the patch that I made last night. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just this uh, LRU cache here. Uh, we had some more conversation there as well. But, yeah, pretty cool. Um you know, if you ever find something that's slow, take a whack at profiling it. See if there's something that you can improve there. But anyway, hopefully this was interesting. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.